Hi, uh, my name is Adnan. Um, I think some of you have seen me lurking around in Hackware meetups, right? Um, my day job is at Singapore Power Group. I am labeled an IoT engineer, although I don't know what I'm doing these days, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I built a couple of sensors. They kind of work. We have a dashboard in the, in the offices. Sometimes the battery runs out and we only get a display of blank graphs, <laughs> right? So lately, however, we took a turn with our um, research and development in IoT. Right now, we are more like test and measurement engineers, right? We, are, we have been asked to design and envision a product based on RF detection of failing insulation, wow. right? So now, I'm going to explain a bit, right? This is called partial discharge. When you have a conductor and it's covered around with insulation, naturally to prevent death, yeah? This insulation can break down over time, right? When you have a surface crack in the insulation or an inner bubble due to material defects or a defect on the conductor-facing side of the insulation, these little cracks, right, given high stress of electrical voltages, creates a little thunder. It's called a corona discharge, right? And when that thunder doesn't crack through the entire insulation, it's called a partial discharge. Now, these partial discharges, right, they give off a variety of events, observable ones, right? One of the ones we are um, looking at are optical because they have tiny flashes of light. They give off sound in the form of ultrasonics. They change the chemical properties of the insulation, gives off fumes. And the last one is it gives off RF impulses. So now these RF impulses can be detected in a variety of ways. Yeah? One is through radiated ones, which is like um, radio emissions. And the other type is through the conducted emissions, which is going through the wires itself. Now, the ones with the, uh, going through the wires are the ones we are most interested in. You put a clamp around it, a current clamp. You filter out all the AC signal of the low frequencies, which is your 50 hertz, right? And you only listen out for the high frequency ones. So this is the type of RF detection I'm interested in these days, right? So for the past two months, right, I've been digging around how to make digitizers, RF analog front ends, and... Um, um, high-speed um, A to D converters just to listen out and observe these kind of RF impulses. Naturally, with high-speed digitization, my job gravitates towards FPGAs. Yeah, because only FPGAs has the capability to interface with high-speed digitizers. Now, I'm talking about digitizers at least of 100 mega samples a second. Right? And that's really fast. And you can't just take a microcontroller write something in C or Rust, and then transfer it to SRAM. 100 mega samples is way too fast for these languages to work. So hardware must be in, uh, used to interface between the analog to digital converter to the SRAM. Right? And one of the best ways to do it for high-speed transfer of data is to use a configurable logic called the FPGA. Yeah? So there are many brands of FPGAs. Yeah? There's Altera, now bought over by Intel, there's Xilinx, Lattice, Actel, QuickLogic, and uh, maybe a few more smaller ones. So the ones I'm focusing today is on the Xilinx and a particular family called the ZingQ7000. Right? So Xilinx ZingQ7000 is unique in that it's a giant FPGA, but on the right corner, there is a small ARM processor. So out of the box, right, this um, Xilinx FPGA, you can interface it with, all, uh, with normal RAM and ROMs and um, peripherals that can function as an ARM microcontroller. So the evaluation kit I bought from FNet, naturally it comes with all the big memories, one gigabyte of um, DDR SDRAM. Yeah, it's got enough memory and uh, when you power it up out of the box, it runs Linux. Yeah, so that's great and wonderful. I'm so focused on reading all about FPGAs and the high-speed A to D converters on how to interface them for the last two months. 
Okay, so that's kind of basically my um, job description. And uh, this is where King Ming comes in. <laughs> <laughs> Can I plug in? No, just Mr. Wen. Uh, you, you, you talk, yeah. yeah. So if anyone wants to work in this kind of field, uh, no display. So, yeah, so um, Kang Ming and I have realized the two of us are not enough to accomplish what we hope to, to build out of this um, new technologies, right? So we created a job description in our company website. <laughs> if anyone is interested, please come here. <laughs> okay, so, um, so I'm so heavily focused on the Xilinx microcontroller, right? About three weeks ago, Usually after work, I'm really tired. I go to Hackerspace, watch a TV show, and maybe crash out down there, right? So about three weeks ago, on a Friday night, I was busily watching Jack Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good movie, uh, it's a good TV show. Huh? So halfway through the show, this um, was quite late at night, maybe about 11 o'clock, this huge um, Ang Mo guy came knocking on the door. He had a loud voice. Hey, who's here good in hardware, right? All fingers start to point at me in the dark, right? They, they turn on all the lights. Oh, yeah, what can I do for you, right? Hi, my name is Edmund. Yeah, Edmund, what can we do for you? I'm here to trying to promote my hardware, right? Now, little did I realize this Edmund guy is really strong in open source community. So he gives me out this device. He says he wrote the software to run this device. So I'm going to pass it around. Now, this device has been on a crowd supply program. It's called the Icebreaker. So it's an open source program for using the Lattice... Um, I forget. X40. Ice40. Ice40. Ice40 with 5 kilo... Um, 5,000 5, modules of uh, programmable LUTs. Yeah, so that's really big. Yeah. So, um, this, <laughs> I'm not all that familiar with the Lattice family of um, FPGAs. I understand it is a very useful piece of um, FPGA here. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's sold for about $40 US, right? Now, so this Edmund, right, after we chatted a bit more, I find out that his uh, full name is Edmund Human Burger. He says his name is hard to forget, right? <laughs> Human burger, right? So <laughs> I quickly excused myself out, out of the TV show and then I tried to get past him to get home, right? Then he says, hey, no, let me give you a little gift, right? I'm leaving on Sunday, right? And so we parted ways, right? So in the bus, um, before he left, he told me a few more things. I hurriedly packed my stuff and rushed off, right? So he says he works with a partner named Richard Wolf. Huh? Clifford a uh, Clifford Wolf. A uh, Clifford Wolf. I didn't know who these guys were. So on the way home, I started googling them. Right? Oh crap! <laughs> Edmund Humanberger. He wrote the software called um, part of the software called SimbiFlow. Okay, I just learned that word about thirty minutes ago. <laughs> SimbiFlow is the graphical interface of Pic. Um, pick and place, is it? No, place and route. Place and route for the FPGA. Now, in an FPGA, you got configurable logics, right? And um, how they are placed with your, with your design of the logic circuits, they place all the wires between the configurable logic blocks. All right? So, he is Edmund Hubenberger. Um, his partner is Clifford Wolf. And Clifford Wool happens to write the whole set of ICE tools. Yeah, and that's open source also. ICE tools is the raw um, synthesis tools for the FPGA itself. So as I read through their blogs and their README files, I find out that they have reverse engineered the entire lattice um, bitstream. Yeah, so this bitstream wasn't given or defined to them by Lattice themselves. They kind of worked it out backwards. 
and now they have made these tools um, open source. Right? So, like I said earlier, I haven't prepared for this talk. I have nothing to show you in this thing, but I can promise you that next year, come January, we'll have a better Hackwire meetup with me introducing the SimbiFlow um, tool chain for this FPGA. All right, with that, I thank you. <laughs> ah, this one still stands, huh? If anyone's interested, please come in. <laughs> Bye.